Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen, this is Hard Rock University, and uh, we're back at Montana Bee. Somebody pried this board off while we were gone. I had to re replace it. This one here has screws. I can see why they took the one with nails, but that was kind of rude, folks. Now, we got a number of things to do here. Because of the light, I'll do this one first. Yesterday we came out, and this is the pack rat structure. This is the one that has pretty good grade pockets down deep. So, I took and uncovered it for a bit to try and figure out what we've got. And it gets a little complex. This is kind of a handy delineating structure here with the <coughs> loose stuff and then a little strip of um, sandstone. See, there's the quartzite sandstone, the loose stuff. In this case, the small, the lower layer is almost non-existent. Lower layer almost non-existent, sandstone, and the debris. And over here, I'm going to have to clear that out a little bit higher, just to be sure. Slippery mountainsides. So, I have to do a little more work to make sure that I know exactly where I'm at here. But the... I think this is the pack rat structure here, although this might be it. I'll have to double check. And the only thing that I see that seems to vary from point to point is this scale, basically, a fluorescent coating in places. There seem to be places where it's more fragmented and has the coating in the cracks. I'm assuming that may be because the rock itself had sulfides in it at one time and therefore they react once they get moisture. But let me get out my sampling equipment, look this over, take some samples, and then head down. I uh, spent yesterday do repairing stuff with all this retimbering here. Some rocks went down the shaft. I had three ladders on the, uh, uh, three rungs on the ladder that got damaged. And that whole platform down at the 45, uh, 40 foot level, uh, it just got thrashed. So I had to replace all that yesterday too. Luckily there's plenty of wood or it would cost a fortune. <laughs> okay, let me get back to work. Okay, so here we have a complex situation, which unfortunately is kind of what nature throws at you. This zone here is what I call the pack rat structure because that's where pack rat penthouse is hosted. As you can see, this is broken up a lot, although I took a sample out of there, so some of that may be from simply sledgehammering. But when you come over here, it seems to disappear. Things head off yonder. Don't see a whole lot, but there's different rock here in the same place and you may not see it too well. So let me just show you. See how it hardly scratches? Or is that scratch as well? 
that hardly scratches. That scratches well. Let me see the difference between that and that. Now this also is a little gray. You can see it's actually leaving some of the steel. Same thing here. We have softer rock there, softer rock here, and harder rock there. Okay? Now, this is silica. This, I believe, is dolomite, which is a kind of limestone. Limestone is calcium carbonate, dolomite is calcium magnesium carbonate. And there's a couple ways you can tell. But the easiest way in the field is you take some acid. Oh, come on. Now this little acid bottle is a, a bottle from Eva's Vape stuff. And uh, I keep it in a waterproof match case in my uh, backpack to make sure it doesn't leak all over everything. If you take this, put it here, you have no reaction. And see how it's just bubbling in the crack mainly? The fine powder dolomite dissolves well. I mean, it falls well. Now this looks like a calcium. See how that just bubbles like crazy? That's more of a limestone fill from the uh, weathering. But what I think we have here, this is silica that's injected into the dolomite. That seems to have a little bit of reaction to it. If we go up over here, kind of follow it over a little. Again, you get this soft rock, hard rock. Soft rock, soft, soft, soft. So this layer here is different. Now, at the pack rat structure, it seems to be associated with a lot of silica. So I'm gonna assume that may be the good stuff. Come over here. Soft, harder, harder, and getting softer again. Now another thing, both in dolomite and limestone, these kind of cup-shaped things, when it's exposed to the rain, the main weathering is from chemical weathering. There's a little bit of carbon dioxide dissolved in the rain. It's very slightly acid. And that is very typical of limestone. You'll also quite often get lines weathered into it. Uh, I don't see any handy, but I'll see if I can find some later and get a picture. This, on the other hand, you notice there's no cupping going on here. And it's harder. So this is silica. And that is the dolomite again. But that gives you a quick and easy way of determining, in some cases, what is what. And I think it's these pockets of silicification that may hold the ore. So, off to sampling now. Okay, so there's the ladder. There's along about rung about a third of the way down, two thirds of the way down, and that one right there needed repairs. That stole right there got whacked, so the end of the rail was flopping around a little bit. Got the rail secured so that it it's good to stand on here. And uh this horizontal piece here got demolished. There's one of the pieces of it over there. So I had to tear that out, completely replace it. 
those are two of the original deck boards and there's two more in there so now we've got a good platform right there and somewhere down there I'm not sure exactly where is my tape measure so I'm gonna have to go get that I've got some other stuff to do this afternoon depending on the time I may go in there and start cross-cutting trenches because you've obviously got valuable material there and they took some out down here but down here we just have some big a big stope on the far side of this pillar and no visible work downward so I want to cross cut and see because it would be plausible that this mineralization continues going to depth and that would be a nice nice uh, ore body there but first we have to find it and verify it so let me climb down into the sump and get my tape measure and get back to work okay I've now taken my samples and got my tape measure back so I can measure distances all distances are measured from that end of the wood there and in this area here we have three different types of rock this one I'm calling the red quartz this is kind of the black quartz and in some areas of this it has this porous iron looking stuff this is 13 feet down no porous iron here you got the red quartz you got the black quartz again using the scratch test you can determine the edges it's very irregular that's a good indication of mineralization here this is the edge right here you can see how irregular that is and so this is the red quartz and this is the black quartz there at 19 feet and at 34 feet this is what I sampled now I'm not absolutely sure that's even the same stuff there's a lot of mountain to move here to be sure that does appear to be the uh, um, kind of yellowish shale type stuff there but this is not a pure quartz it's more like a silicified dolomite I think it's harder than this but it's not as hard as pure quartz so anyhow get my samples head down the hill go to project B for the day that's uh, confidential and depending on how my body's holding up I'll see about coming up here and getting some more samples underground later just in case I don't happy prospecting and keep it safe out there